Hello, welcome to another Tonal Soundscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. You can also uh, refer to me as Mike. You can call me Mike if you like. Uh, the painting I'm bringing you today is, uh, I'm going to call it a study after Dupre, um, which uh, somebody on the channel has uh, corrected my usual pronunciation of that. I was going Dupre, but he says it's Dupre as in prelude. So we'll go with that in the absence of knowing <laughs> how to pronounce it. Um, it's really one of these riffing paintings, though, and I took a lot of liberties with it. Uh, so, but we'll get into all that over the length of the video. Um, what are we doing right now? Well, uh, we are working on a bit of hardboard and we're doing the drawing. And uh, the thing that attracted me most to Dupre's painting was that tree I just finished drawing it was quite quite a lot of ins and outs and things to figure out it wasn't uh, it wasn't quick to do um, and oftentimes that's the case with studies I have to work harder and longer on the studies because uh, you know if I'm working up a photo reference or for my imagination or something I just start slapping paint down and making things work it doesn't really matter you know how, how things look but with a uh, sort of a study I always try and get fairly close um, the thing is now you can uh, there'll be a corresponding blog post to this video you'll see a link below and um, also in the the members area you'll have access to uh, the initial bit of the video there which will be full length um, that's a four hour video I will show you the actual reference but um, I changed a, a lot from the reference first of all it was very low res uh, but I was attracted to this tree. Second of all, I'll a cow in it drinking some water. Just not my thing. I don't want to paint that. Um, and his, the sky in the original by him was just totally boring. And I have to say, I think the sky in my, um, let's just call it um, my jam, my, uh, my um, take on this uh, scene uh, is really, it makes the painting you know so I don't know why he opted for this like whitish blah sky uh, but uh, to me it was like that's boring and I don't want to do it but I was attracted to the tree so I do my own things now Dupre was popular back in say the um, well he was alive and popular in the uh, 1800s he was painting in the late 1800s and he was one of the uh, what's called the Barbizon school I'm thinking 1860, 1870, 1880, around there. Don't know when he died. Don't know. Um, <clears throat> not not as well known as Corot or Rousseau, <clears throat> but very good. And I've done quite a few studies after him uh, here on the channel. It's spelled D-U-P-R-E if you want to check out some of those. And um, so, uh, but I, I, I'll have a bit of that reference image, such as it is, the original, uh, not my revised one, um, on the blog post. You can check out if you're curious, or if you feel like making your own study, you go right ahead. It's all good. Now, uh, that, that one on the blog post won't have my adjusted sky reference, but, uh, you know, you can always just pop in your own sky. I use the... Um, well, I do quite a lot of modifications in my reference prior to painting. It's uh, something I've been doing for a long time. I didn't start out doing that, um, but um, it's sort of like uh, <clears throat> one of the things I learned from my many years as a commercial illustrator is that reference is key, reference is king. The better uh, the reference, the better the painting, the better the artwork that you'll produce. Um, many times, say, if I had to illustrate a so let's just say a bear or something like that because that would come up quite often I would be doing designs for um, the uh, the international, uh, not international for the, the national parks in the uh, United States um, and I just keep looking and looking and looking until I found a, a really good bear um, because you say you're in a hurry you got deadline pressures but <clears throat> all the reference you find is lame well I mean you can provide a lot of imagination you can provide a lot of technique but uh, you're still starting with an initial thing that is less than inspiring. Your painting, uh, drawing, illustration, or whatever it is, is only going to be so good. 
Let me have a sip of tea here. I've got a bit of a frog on my throat. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm sure that was starting to sound a little weird. Um, you have noticed by I was listening to one of my um, older videos of the day. It, my voice does sound a little higher and uh, less gravelly, so that's where it's headed. Um, but hey, we're getting old, but uh, it's all good, you know. Another day uh, above ground, another day to make a painting. Um, so yes, I popped in my own sky and the uh, reference, and it was quite inspiring. And you can see, I think it came out pretty beautiful. Uh, like I said, I think it makes the painting uh, that, and of course that very very interesting tree. Um, when the uh, composition's pretty cool too. Um, don't even miss the cow. I'm not into painting cows. If I was going to paint a cow, I might do one in profile or something like that. Um, but uh, it's just not me. It's not my kind of thing. Um, and, you know, Dupre, he's long gone. He's not around. Um, but I'd like to think that he'd still be okay with what I've done um, as it is calling attention to his work. And uh, you, uh, you, there's quite a few I have sitting in a folder um, that... I'm looking forward to doing some studies out after and they won't all just be riffing that's the word i was trying to remember riffing riffing on dupre i'll probably call that this video again i don't know the name of his uh his painting and it was very low res as i pointed out but <clears throat> pardon me pardon me hopefully that didn't sound too bad rough video eh <laughs> Well, so many of you bail uh, early on anyway, four minute mark, five minute mark. Um, I figure the ones that do stick around. Let's get into some tips for you. Um, I am using, uh, at this point, uh, I like to paint in the sky. And uh, then I go after the land portion of my scene. In this case, uh, I went in with all the darkest darks, which are just plain old black. Um, there are people on the interwebs that will tell you black is a bad, bad color. I'm here to tell you I disagree 100%. And why is that? Well, Dupre would have used black. He wouldn't have used this weird combination of burn umber and ultramarine blue. He probably had access to ultramarine blue. And he probably had access to burn umber. But black was just used by the old guys, okay? It was not until the Impressionists came along that they uh, started to badmouth black. And um, you know, black in the hands of an uh, inexperienced painter can be a very bad thing uh, because it will have a tendency to really make things muddy. But to me, that's its greatest asset, too. Um, so I use black in the two pronged approach. Like, I'll use it for my darkest darks. And I've heard criticisms like, oh, it creates a hole in the painting. Yeah. yeah, right. Dark is dark. Black is black. Okay. Don't don't give me that. I'm not going for it. I do understand why some teachers don't like to teach with black. Because your average student who maybe hasn't um, worked with paint or pigment much will think, oh, I want to make it darker. I'll add it black. Just like they think I want to make it lighter. I'll add some white. What you really should be doing is mixing a dark color or mixing a light color, you know. And, and in fact, I can just tell you, uh, since you're, you know, you've made it here to the, uh, oh, what are we, seven, eight minute mark. Um, you want to mix that color, you know. Don't just, uh, don't just darken it, you know. Go after it. Um, so let's say I want to make a color that's lighter um, without using white, well, I might use orange, or I might use, on my palette, um, uh, I have yellow ochre. A lot of times I'll use it for uh, for that sort of purpose. Then if I have to, I don't put any white in anything until I absolutely have to. Um, the sky is always the exception to that, because white uh, works well in the sky. But in the land, try adding some white to your green mixture, and you're going to see it chalks it right up. Now, there are times that's an effect you want for hitting certain types of greens, right? But usually, no. Um, so, if I want a bit of my tree lighter, oh yeah, of course, I'm forgetting cadmium yellow. Um, but cadmium yellow is going to have a bit of an impact more so than, say, 
yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is not as um, impregnated with yellow as ye cad yellow. Cad yellow is the yellowest yellow, you know. Um, and you're going, which yellow? Which? I use uh, the light cad yellow, by the way, for those of you that are interested. And um, I should point out again here, too, in the um, members area, you're going to have a color mixing session, which in this one is pretty long, it looks like, because I just removed it to do this video. Um, and I'll take you uh, through the uh, the breakdown of the, the painting and some basic constituent colors. And um, from there, you know, we uh, we jump into the painting generally. Yeah. Um, so I use, if you've noticed, if you've been around for a while, I use a very similar approach to almost all my paintings. I work it out as a drawing slash underpainting on the board. That gives me the composition, some basic uh, value structure. Um, and, and don't you don't need to sweat that too much, you know. Um, I'm hearing things going on in the other room. Sorry about that. Um, and then you know, I sometimes I go right into the color from there, or sometimes I'll get let that dry. It depends. Um, in a case like this painting, I would have let it dry because. Uh, there was a lot of complexity involved with um, just getting that tree right. It's a very interesting tree. It's a little flat, so you're going to see um, I left it uh, for a uh, what would have been uh, a, a second color pass. Um, well, in this case, I think it was maybe even a third color pass um, to, to get in there, and that's actually what we're doing now. We're darkening a little bit, um, and then we're going to lighten a little bit, and we're going to get things a little added dimension. Uh, while I did appreciate the flat effect, um, it wasn't it wasn't really what what he was doing, what he was about. Um, also, I will point out in this uh, final stage we're looking at here, I did not queue up that reference again, and that's a you know where are we at? Twelve minutes right now. That's a huge tip I I can impart to you. Um, if you're working with reference and you've got at a certain point in time you will have absorbed everything from that reference that is going to be beneficial to your painting. So uh, it really can be a great idea to finish the painting with no reference at all. Um, just your imagination and um, you it's just you, the painting, and the paint. Um, this can keep you from ruining things. It's a great tip. I definitely recommend trying it out if you're inexperienced. Now, I am pretty experienced at this point in time, <clears throat> and um, uh, you know, having overworked hundreds of paintings, I tend to know when to stop now. Um, but if you're if you're still at that point where you know you're killing things, um, overworking things, just just there's a great tip for you. Just leave the reference. Uh, if you're using a, a digital display, just turn it off, or if you're using a printout. Um, just don't pull it out of the drawer or whatever. Yeah. Let's see what else we want to talk about. Um, yeah, this painting shaping up. I have to say, I feel it's one of the more attractive paintings in my studio right now, and I'm going to be putting it in my store. I'm um, going to have a price on this of uh, 350. It's 11 by 14. It's a little larger, and a heck of a lot of work went into it, but. It's attractive. I, I need to uh, get a, a nice frame out of my uh, my storage bin in my garage there and pop it on there and, and hang it up. And uh, I, I haven't 100% uh, professionally photographed it yet. The um, the images that are in the store are generally stills from the video, which are not bad. I'm I'm f um, I'm filming at uh, 4K. So, um, and that also is a feature of the members area, which I'm really pimping today. <laughs> uh, but you know, you don't have to join the members area. I appreciate, appreciate you just hanging out here. If you, if you do, I think you get a lot of value there because, um, it's not just, uh, real time videos there with, you know, we're basically in the throes of battle together. Um, but also some insight into how I composite, um, my reference images, quite a few videos like that. And some other basic uh, tips and tricks videos. I try to make it a good value, and it only costs uh, six bucks a month. So, if you want to get a little deeper into the world of M. Francis, that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah, and it helps support the channel, helps support my uh, uh, my endeavors here, and uh, 
it's a great bunch of uh, people that are uh, there yeah um, let's see last thing I want to point out is uh, you can see we're wrapping things up and it's got a nice feel um, definitely had some challenges with like uh, this could be another thing too maybe you know, I want to try and get more tips in for you it's like so say you got things in the land uh, and you're referencing you go, what is that I don't know what that is but don't worry too much about it just treat everything as a shape okay paint the shapes you see um, and paint them as faithfully as you can um, and more important than painting them faithfully is painting them in a, in a way that's aesthetically appealing and makes sense to you that it's congruent with what you what you're doing and what the painting's about that's way more important than oh it's a you know it's a, a, a it's a tree trunk with with three branches coming off it I must paint it exactly like that and nobody cares nobody's going to see your reference nobody cares about your reference I do share a lot of times my reference in the members area but that's one reason I don't like to share it just willy-nilly because I don't need to be uh, you know I like my paintings to be judged as my paintings anyway that's it for today's video thank you so much for joining me today I really appreciate you taking the time uh, and getting all the way through this video I know you have lots of uh, options um, if you're of the type of person that will leave me a comment on, or leave a comment on a YouTube video I love to get comments I love to read them um, it's great to have some feedback um, no positive feedback <laughs> negative feedback I imagine that you wouldn't be this far along if you had anything negative to say anyway until I come back with another video do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself your family all your loved ones stay out of trouble and God bless you and your